All right. So this is a different kind of a service called load balancer service, which is available in Kubernetes. Now, to be able to use this specific type of uh, service, you need to enable an option called cloud provider when you are creating your Kubernetes cluster. Let me just quickly show that to you. When you're creating a cluster, let's say I chose EC2, you can see there is an option called cloud provider. You can, let's say if it is Amazon, you know, you can select whether you want to enable, enable the Amazon cloud provider. So what it means is you need to uh, create certain roles and IAM instance profiles in your AWS account and use that profile name when you are creating the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster. So to find more information, you can go to docs.rancher.com and you can go to rancher2.x and here I think there is a cloud provider somewhere here. Let me search. Cool, there's a cloud provider and here I believe, yes. So here, here is the IAM policy. So you first create a policy, you attach to that to a role and use that role name when you are creating the nodes of your cluster. So for creating the node templates, you go here and let's say you add a node template and Okay, you see this particular field, you have to specify your profile name here so that you can take uh, the cloud provider functionality uh, into your advantage. Cool. All right, so what, what, what happens, you know, when you enable this uh, cloud provider, right? So let's say you create this kind of a service. Uh, by the way, so this is an external uh, load balancer. What it uh, means is it it helps you expose your application outside of your cluster. When you create a service of type load balancer, it creates a load balancer in AWS or whatever cloud provider you are using. Along with that, you know all the underlying components which are needed are created. For example, you know if a node pod is uh, needed, a cluster IP is needed, they're all created for you automatically. And you know the how. Uh, you know things work in for each uh, cloud provider. It really depends on the actual implementation. So you can check out the uh, the documentation here in this at this particular link to find out you know what options are available, how you can customize this particular load balancer and stuff like that. One important point to note here is when, uh, for example, in AWS, if you create a service, it's going to create a new load balance for you. So if you have ten different services you are going to end up with 10 different load balancers. So you got to be really careful when you are using this service. You know, otherwise, you know, your costs are going to go up. This is not like ingress where, you know, you will see, you know, you just have one load balancer and then you can create multiple um, ingress objects. Here, every service object creates a new load balancer. And also, by the way, this load balancer service is also layer four. And I think, um, the newer uh, versions of the uh, load balancer controller, they are able to leverage layer seven. So you can check out the documentation for more information. They use uh, annotations to customize your load balancer. You can pass SSL certificates and things like that. All right, so what happens behind the scenes? You know, you have a deployment, uh, let's call it Charlie here, and then you create a service and here you can see line number eight, you are specifying the type of the service as a load balancer. You know, the same old things, you know, you can have, uh, you, ha you can see the port mappings, you can see the label selectors, and you can see the internal clients that can access your service using the service name, colon, the, the port, and your external clients can access your app using either the IP address of your load balancer or the C name or an alias for the load balancer. All right, so for the demo of this particular type of load balancer, you know, we are going to use the same Kubernetes cluster. We are going to launch a 
uh, app and then you know we are going to see it in action and just like the other scenarios you can try out yourself you know how um, you know the upgrades are done how scaling up scaling down is going to work and things like that all right before i jump on to the demo are there any questions um is this is from kishore is there any way to have a load balancer without cloud provider yeah 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 uh, I mean, there are there are uh, other uh, options available. Like like the, the first thing is like you know if you disable, um, um, if you if you if you just uh, disable the cloud provider option, obviously then you know there's no load balancer created for you, and uh, you can have load balancers in front of your cluster. You know there are other options, other ways you can set up load balancers. I'll cover that towards uh, the next topic. Um, okay, cool. There's there's a, many questions on various topics, but why don't you go through the demo and then we okay, can... Okay, sure. Let's, let's just go through the demo. Yeah. All right. So let me jump back to workloads here and switch to workloads. All right. So we are demoing type load balancer. So let's click deploy. And this is Charlie. I'm using the same image. And I'm using a single pod. And let me click on add port. I want to run my container port on 9003 and for that I specify the port as 9003 and I want to show C the alphabet C and here you can see in the drop down menu here I can specify a layer 4 load balancer so this option is available if your cluster has cloud provider enabled so let's just click this and you know you can specify what port you want to expose this on and like like i mentioned earlier you know this this particular layer 4 load balancer type is useful if you are trying to use a non web app what it means is like let's say you have mongodb or mysql or uh, you know some chat application you can use this kind of a load balancer um, you know there is no limitation like ingress so let's say i want to use um, what, what was the port i was planning to use let me check 93 all right so i want to use port 93 that's it and then i launch it cool so here while this is going through oh cool it went through let's uh, switch to service discovery under the hoods you know the load balancer service has been created and if you want to get more details before we do that let's just click on this here you can see we have hooked up the c name of the load balancer that was allocated to us as you can see this is not yet uh, loaded the reason is you know if you go back into the cluster launch the kubectl you know we just have the load balancer created just a few seconds back and usually it takes uh, pro like a minute or two for the dns entry to propagate as you can see the error message it says you know it failed on D uh, dns uh, you know non-existent domain so let's try it one more time it's, it's still not there you know you can check this from the command line as well quickly now let me copy this all right so now it's no error i think the page should load now cool there you go so we have a load balancer uh type service uh working in action i want to show you um i want to explain what's happening underneath the hood right so when you create a load balancer uh service a new load balancer is created for you that's we saw that here and under the ports column you can see you know the load balancer is exposing the port 93 now underneath the hood you know as you know the uh, the, the app that is launched inside a cluster it cannot be accessed from outside so you need some kind of a concept so what happened here is you know kubernetes 
created a node port on your behalf automatically and this node port is mapped to the charlie application that we have launched so underneath the hood you know a lot of things are happening when you create a service of load balancer type okay cool so that's that's all i have here let's jump back to the next topic